Paul and Fobrus, and this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to various effects our planet receives as it orbits around the galaxy. Or actually one very specific and somewhat unexpected discovery that came from the recent study, which suggests that the motion of continents on the planet, to some extent, is actually influenced by the gravitational interactions as the solar system moves to the rest of the galaxy. With all of this related to the concept known as the galactic year. But all of this being a bit of a surprise when the scientists discovered it. But let's discuss this in a little bit more detail because there's quite a lot to unpack here. First of all, when it comes to various periodicities or various patterns on the planet, there are quite a lot of different periods that planet Earth goes through that do influence the geology or even the climate of the planet. For example, in this case, you're looking at something known as precession. Although what effects precession potentially has on the planet is still not entirely clear today. And there are actually quite a lot of different periodicities, mostly because of the way that the planet orbits around the Sun, that we usually refer to as the Milankovitch cycles. With these cycles resulting in variations of the climate on the planet, which tends to oscillate back and forth depending on where the planet is. There are also a lot of other effects, even from the Sun itself, especially as the Sun goes through various cycles inside of it. But for the majority of these cycles, the human lifespan is just too short to notice. As a matter of fact, we don't really notice most of these cycles, unless we look at the geological record of planet Earth. But when it comes to the most influential events that basically change the planet dramatically, there are usually two that come to mind. Huge volcanic eruptions that influenced the planet in the past, or massive asteroid collisions, which generally influence the planet almost right away. And not so long ago, we've actually discussed this really interesting study that discovered an intriguing link between meteorite impacts and the production of continents on planet Earth. With the implication being that the asteroid impacts very likely influenced the formation of early continents on the planet by essentially softening up some of the crust on early Earth and eventually forcing the continents to form. You can learn a little bit more about this in one of the videos in the description. But this time, the scientists behind the recent study that you can find in the description below as well identified another previously unknown cycle, but at much, much grander scales. So this paper right here discovered a cycle that's in millions of years, actually close to 200 million per cycle. And in this case, related to the way that the solar system orbits around the galaxy itself. So what exactly did the scientists find and how did they discover it? In order to find this, once again, they had to study the rocks on the planet. By looking at various minerals, oh, the problem not in the way that this guy is doing it right here. Actually, by trying to find various types of crystals that generally trap a lot of other elements, and by using uranium dating in order to determine the age, the scientists were able to create a kind of an age and composition graph that showed them how frequent various minerals were molten and how often the crust solidified on the planet allowing the scientists to see that there's a kind of a frequency in crust production. Or in other words, that the crust on the planet will be produced much more frequently at certain times, and then there would be a kind of a period where it wouldn't be as often. Although in this particular case, this was only using some of the more ancient rocks, so this only seems to apply to the ancient periods on the planet. It would be difficult to see if this is still happening today as well. And the frequency in this case was roughly around 200 million years. So basically, every 200 million years, for some reason, the amount of crust on the planet seems to kind of increase, as if the planet suddenly becomes more active, potentially because of volcanism, maybe because of the asteroid collisions, or maybe both. And I guess normally we would probably leave it at that. But in this case, the scientists decided to kind of speculate a little bit more, and potentially even discover the source of this periodicity. What's causing this? Why exactly is it 200 million years? And so in this case, the scientists really have to start thinking outside of the box. They had to leave the solar system and look at the bigger picture. They had to see if any of this could be caused, in this case, the orbit of the solar system around the galaxy. Now today, we believe that the Sun sort of orbits in this way. The speed of the Sun going around the galaxy is around 240 km per second, and it takes roughly around 200 million years to complete a single orbit. Today, this is known as the galactic year. By the way, there's an older video on the channel that should be in the description that actually talks a little bit more about exactly how the solar system orbits around the galaxy. Because there are still a lot of misconceptions about it. But anyway, the thing about the solar system as it orbits around the galaxy is that its speed is actually a little bit different compared to some of the other objects, such as the galactic arms. In this case, the galactic arms have a slightly slower velocity of about 220 km per second, 
which suggests that once in a while, the solar system is going to pass through the galactic arms and thus find itself in a more dense environment with more stars, more gas, and thus more gravitational influence. In this case, the scientists calculate that approximately every 200 million years, the Sun actually passes through one of these galactic arms, experiencing the effects in the process. And by passing through these denser regions, the galactic interaction with other objects, for example some of the stars that could be much closer now, would cause some of the distant objects from the Oort cloud to then make their way toward the inner solar system and increase the collision chance with various planets, including of course, planet Earth. Or in other words, by passing through these galactic arms, the chance of a collision with the planet increases dramatically, resulting in major craters, but also resulting in a lot of crust, remelting and reforming again. And because a lot of these distant objects would actually be colliding with the planet at much higher velocities, up to 50 km per second, the resulting collision would be much more powerful compared to a typical asteroid. And so it's these very high energy impacts, periodic high energy impacts, that seem to be visible in the record found in these minerals. Although at the moment, that's just one of the potential explanations. Pretty good one, but still not a definitive explanation, because first of all, we're still not entirely certain how many arms our galaxy has, and how often the solar system actually passes through these arms. And more importantly, we still have no idea what happens to the solar system when it does pass through these arms, and if it actually has any effect at all. Nevertheless, intriguingly, this image created by the scientists also kind of maps the location of the solar system when some of the impacts occurred on the planet. For example, when the biggest crater was created on Earth, the scientists believed the solar system was somewhere right here, whereas the solar system was right here during the impact that killed the dinosaurs, with the stars in this case also indicating the major extinction events. And at least two may have happened when the solar system was indeed in one of the arms. Now obviously this is a huge speculation and just a correlation, but it would still be interesting to investigate this and to either disprove this or maybe find some other clues in, for example, various asteroids around the solar system, or even by looking at the objects like the moon. For example, by measuring the frequency of collisions on the moon and by essentially counting the craters on the moon, it might be possible to prove or disprove this because we'd actually expect the same pattern here as well. There should be some kind of a frequency increase every 200 million years. It hasn't been done yet, but this is one way we can maybe prove this. But because the Moon and Mercury have quite a lot of craters on the surface, it would probably take some time to establish this. Nevertheless, this right here is quite an interesting proposition and quite an interesting and unusual discovery. And I guess only time will tell if the scientists are onto something here or if it's just a complete coincidence and there is some other explanation for this unusual pattern inside the crust. On that note, once we discover something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.